Ophthalmology is a medical specialty. Uh, ophthalmologists treat patients with various eye diseases. So here in the research laboratories of this department, we try to focus on those eye diseases that are either common in our local community, or if they're not common, that are devastating in their effect on vision. So in other words, we're trying to work on the big important problems. Corneal transplantation is actually a very common procedure. There are about 1,200 grafts performed every year in Australia. Now if you look at why corneal grafts fail, the major reason is corneal graft rejection. About mm, 30 to 50 per cent of grafts that do fail, fail for that reason. The average survival of a corneal graft is 12 years and the major reason for failure is immunological rejection. We're looking at a model to prolong the survival of corneal transplants using gene therapy to express immune modulatory genes in the eye. I hope one day that this can lead to a clinical treatment and it can improve the um, survival of corneal grafts for patients and so they have fewer surgical interventions. How do we really know how successful corneal transplantation is? We decided we'd set up the Australian Corneal Graft Registry to track the outcome of every Australian who received a corneal transplant. We've got records of 23,000 Australians with a corneal graft. From the data that we collect as part of the Australian Corneal Graft Registry, we're able to detect variables um, that make it more or less likely that a graft will survive. And we can then give that information back to the surgeons who are performing these grafts, which then enables them to make the best decisions possible for their patient's care. Miriam is a Flinders graduate. She did her PhD in the Department of General Practice. And she is a very good statistician. The analysis that I'm working on at the moment is looking at whether or not there is the same graft survival for those corneas that do travel interstate and it's looking like um, actually they don't perform quite so well so that's an important thing to look at to try and work see if we can work out why that would be happening. The sort of drug therapies that are used for kidney grafts and heart grafts, lungs, don't actually work at all well for the cornea. So we, we need different approaches. I'm working with porous silicon. Uh, it's very similar to the silicon you have in your computers, except that it's got really tiny holes in it. Uh, the holes are the size of about one one thousandth the width of a normal human hair, and this gives it some interesting properties. It allows us to grow cells on it and to load drugs in it, and I'm looking at these applications. Certain diseases require multiple injections into the eye. So what we're aiming to do is to use porous silicon to deliver the drugs as a slow release and then you don't actually need to give the injections. The retinopathy of prematurity is a potentially blinding condition of very premature infants. Some treatment is available but it is the second most common cause of childhood blindness in developed countries. What we're doing is trying to find a way, um, a non-invasive way of looking at these infants by say a blood test um, to look at changes in the expression of genes and proteins and see if that can yield more information about the disease. So Melinda has been trying to pin down the genes that, that may be different in different people and that may even be disease causative. Flinders has been a really supportive environment and uh, I've really learned a lot here and um, it's a good family, there's a lot of collaborations. I found it's a really fantastic place to work, uh, it's, uh, it's a really friendly environment and it's conducive to actually uh, doing your research and learning. I can see that what I do sitting at a computer each day actually then has a practical application in the world and is actually helping people. Karen Williams gave me uh, my first job out of my undergraduate degree, um, so I've been working as a research assistant with her for a, a long time. Um, I've just completed my PhD with her um, and the university has also given me lots of opportunities by giving me grant money to go away um, and present my work nationally and internationally. The School of Medicine, the Flinders Medical Centre, feels like a global village. I can walk into any laboratory or office anywhere in this building and I can ask for help. I can ask for expertise or reagents or, or to use someone's equipment to borrow something. And people will always say yes. It's, it's a very friendly and collaborative place to work.